You're listening to the Really Useful Podcast. It's the tech podcast for technophobes. Hello there, my name is Christian Colley from makeuseof.com and I'm here with another collection of tips and tricks for you to make the best use out of your technology. In this week's show, we're taking a look at one of the most popular tablets on the market, the Amazon Fire and Amazon Fire HD, launched in 2014 as a successor to the Amazon Kindle Fire tablets, the Fire and Fire HD run Fire OS. They are perfect for a variety of purposes. They're also less than perfect for certain tasks at make use of we've collected a considerable library of articles about the amazon fire tablets and we're going to be drawing on some of those you will find all information in this week's show in our show notes and we're going to take a look at what's good what's bad about amazon fire tablets and what you can do with them some tips and tricks that you may not know about so let's get started We're going to start by taking a look at which is the best Amazon Fire tablet available, which would be most suitable to you. As of the end of 2020, there are several models of Amazon Fire tablet available. Now, these are suited to slightly different purposes. At the heart, they're all basically the same, but some are better for portability, some are better for children, and some are just really good overall. And that's where we'll start. We'll start with the best overall Fire tablet, and it's the Fire HD 10. This comes with a 10.1 inch 1080p full HD display with 32 gigabytes of storage. If you've already used a Fire tablet, you will know that storage is a premium. Uh, it's very easy to just to buy the default entry level tablet and find that you run out of space for apps and videos within, in some cases, a week. The Fire HD 10 overcomes that with 32 gigabytes on board and there's still space. There is a micro SD slot which will uh, handle cards up to 512 gigabytes. That's half a terabyte of storage you can add to it. Now, the Amazon Fire HD 10, as with other Amazon Fire tablets, does have one key limitation. These are two gigabyte devices. They only have two gigabytes of RAM compared to a new smartphone also running android because amazon's operating system fire os is based on android uh, a new phone will probably have at least four gigabytes probably eight gigabytes of ram and you can see how there's a bit of a difference here although the fire hd 10 has an octa core processor that's four cores and a processor for extra processing capabilities that two gigabytes is a bit of a bottleneck this is worth considering when buying any model of amazon fire tablet there could be a non-fire tablet that is more suited to your purposes, slightly more expensive, but also more powerful. Now, if you're looking for something that's particularly suited to portability, the Fire HD 8 is an 8-inch tablet. Also, 32 gigabytes of storage is included. But you can find with this one that because it's 8 inches, it's a little bit more handy to carry around. For value, the Fire 7 tablet has been around for years. It's barely been altered. It's ridiculously cheap. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the current price. You're looking at fifty to sixty dollars for an Amazon Fire Seven tablet, and you know even if you're a kid, you could save up for that one of those uh, within a few months. The Fire HD Seven Kids Edition is specifically aimed at younger children, and it comes with a two-year guarantee. It's essentially a Fire HD Seven, but it has a few added bonuses for instance it comes with a rugged case also has a two-year guarantee so if the tablet breaks amazon will replace it for free the device also includes a one-year subscription to the free time service this gives you access to 20,000 apps games books and educational content from well-known brands there's a lot of free games and apps on the amazon app store which on google play you would probably need to pay for so it's, in, it's there's an interesting difference and there's a bit of scope there for you there's also parental control software with the hd7 kids edition you can activate parental control software on other versions of the fire tablets but it's more integrated and there is the uh, free time user interface which is friendly 
for children to use on the Fire HD 7 Kids Edition. So we're taking a look at the Fire HD tablets and you know, clearly the Fire HD 10 tablet is that top of the range option. There is a newer model, there's the Fire HD 8 tablet which is comes along with a Fire HD 8 Plus and there are 8 models, they're portable, there's a kids version and they're probably going to be phased in to replace the 7 inch models. Although having said that, we've said that before about 8 inch models of the Amazon Fire tablet so you know who knows. Now a few years ago I purchased a well, at least two, probably ended up being five, Amazon Fire 7-inch tablets for my children. And as a result of that, I uh, reviewed the Amazon Fire for MakeUseOf.com. I think it might be interesting now to take a look at that review. So uh, we're just going to move into that now. Hi, I'm Christian from MakeUseOf.com, and this is an Amazon Fire tablet. Available in a choice of colours, this is a low-cost, medium-spec slate, which will set you back just $50. In the box you'll find the Amazon Fire 7 and a charger with removable USB cable which doubles for data and power. To get started you simply power up the Fire, enter your Amazon account details, new accounts can be created and you're done. The 7 inch screen has a 1024 by 600 pixel resolution at 171 pixels per inch. It's 1.3 gigahertz quad core big dot little CPU is accompanied by one gigabyte of RAM, eight or 16 gigabytes of storage and a power VR 6200 GPU. Front and back cameras are included. It's two megapixels on the back and a paltry 0.3 megapixel VGA on the front, but these are really just afterthoughts. Running Fire OS 5 and equipped with wireless networking, Bluetooth 4 LE, accelerometer and gyroscopic sensors, the real magic behind the Amazon Fire 7 is media consumption. Amazon's device is looked upon with envy by Apple and Microsoft. Almost everything in this package is geared towards making money. You've got the built-in Kindle app and marketplace for books, the Amazon App Store for apps and games, Amazon Instant Video for movies and TV, recent Amazon purchase Audible provides audiobooks, while online shopping can also be easily achieved by simply opening the appropriate link to Amazon itself. Amazon Music is also included. With an eight and a half hour battery, your mileage may vary, the Amazon Fire 7 is an ideal companion for passengers on a long journey. While there is a dedicated child version of the Amazon Fire 7, you may prefer to simply buy this cheaper version. Amazon claims it is more rugged than the iPad mini, uh, but just to make sure you can buy one of these useful foam cases to slot it into for extra ruggedization. As great as the Amazon Fire 7 is for media consumption, it does have its downsides. Fire OS 5 is clearly based on Android, but could do some work with the user interface. One problem is the child account interface, which is far less usable than the main UI. Another is the insistence of an internet connection to validate downloads from Amazon, which can be pretty inconvenient when traveling. Also, having an ad-supported version of this tablet is odd, although you can pay for the more expensive version, and there's also the possibility of installing standard Android over the top. Ultimately, the Amazon Fire tablet is perfect for anyone who isn't prepared to spend money on an expensive tablet. All in all, the perfect gift for children and parents alike. Now, I think what I learned most about the Amazon Fire 7 inch in particular from conducting that review was its suitability for children. Whether you're using the standard 7 inch tablet, the bigger tablet or the kids edition tablet, which is essentially the 7 inch tablet with a bundled case and a few other bits and bobs, there becomes a point whereby the child outgrows the tablet. The reason for this is pretty simple. Adults can solve problems by referring to the internet, reading instructions, etc. Children can't. While your first impression might be that it's a competent device and can play games, music, audiobooks, videos with a useful 8 hour battery, there are some shortcomings which can cause frustrations, distractions, annoying problems with talking about things where 
you know, turning it off and back on again might help, but the lag, the fast decrease in available space and the lack of mobile internet, they can all cause issues. We've already talked about the insufficient RAM and it's, you know, two gigabytes is not enough for multitasking on a kid's tablet when they might be wanting to play Minecraft, switch to watching a video, switch to an audio book, switch to another game. Um, children don't really understand the importance of closing apps when they're finished with them. They just, because the tablet has the feature, the functionality of supporting multiple apps and tombstoning them, uh, that means basically just freezing the app till you go back to it. There is this scenario where you've got too many apps and the tablet just starts running slow. Frustration descends and children don't like to be frustrated. They like things to work straight away. Online checks for games are also frustrating. If there's no internet connection, you're on a trip. As you heard in the video review, this can be a problem for videos and for games. You've also got games that won't install to, a, to an external SD card. So, you know, you get to the point where a lot of problems require you to factory reset the Amazon Fire tablets, which, you know, that requires a hands-on approach. You need to take the time to then re-enter the credentials and in choose which apps are going to get installed and all the while you know your child is getting a bit bored doing something else getting a bit frustrated alternatively and when you've got two or three children then it gets a bit worse so they are good they are useful but they sh you shouldn't give them the same credence as you would a high-end android or ipad tablet there are alternatives to the amazon fire kids tablets um these are basically Android tablets designed to a slightly different scale. So you've got the Huawei MediaPad T3, the Asus ZenPad 8, and the iPad Mini. These are all better tablets for children. I would also recommend a Samsung tablet. Personally speaking, my children have progressed from a 7-inch Amazon Fire to a 10-inch Samsung tablet uh, available for around £300 each. These aren't cheap, but they're cheaper than top-end tablets. Uh, but they're more functional, and the children are able to use them in more creative ways with better reliability. They're better for school projects, for instance. They're better for connecting to popular school um, management apps, such as um, Shobi and things like that, and using school-approved apps. Uh, they're, they're just more suitable and with a larger screen there's a larger software keyboard media playback is better and there's more space and specification power for apps and games now the thing is we've looked at the bad side of the amazon fire tablet for children and we're going to move on to some more general tips for grown-ups in a bit but if you want to use an amazon fire tablet for children and you've not chosen the kids edition then there are actually options for you to set up the Amazon Fire tablet, any edition, um, using the tools that are already installed. Start by opening the settings screen on the Amazon Fire tablet and under personal, find security and privacy. Here, ensure you have set a lock screen passcode. This can be a password or a pin. Choose whichever one you consider most secure and easy to remember, certainly this will ensure your child cannot access your screen by simply exiting their own. You see, in your screen, a child might inadvertently or mischievously delete and install apps, remove movies from your watch list, and even add or remove items from your Amazon wish list. It's a sensible precaution to take. Now, once you've done that, it's time to create a child profile on the tablet. Pull down the menu from the top of the screen in the notifications area and look for the plus button to add a new user. Tap OK to confirm the step and add the child profile. You can also add adult profiles if you wanted to. Um, you'll need information such as their name and the date of birth. There's also themes available. Uh, blue sky for under nines, midnight black for children between nine and 12. And um, when you've done that, tap add profile and that child now has their own profile. You can then add content to the profile. Go to settings, profile and family library, then add content or remove content to add or remove as necessary this will be based on things that are already installed on the tablet so if you want to add content that isn't installed you'll need to go back to your main screen your, your own profile and install that there's also an age filter screen that you can use to specify what 
type of content is available to that particular user. For instance, uh, I have a younger child who's four, so I would set the age range to four. You can also ensure that in-app purchasing is set to off, preventing your children from causing you some extra expenditure that you may not want them to. Now, it's important for children to spend the optimum amount of time using tablets and other devices, which is why we have a screen time feature in the Amazon Fire tablet. You don't want them to spend the whole day glued to their tablets, so you can set daily goals and time limits from the user profile. You'll see a screen that's split into two tabs, weekdays and weekends, and each of these lets you set a bedtime when the tablet will disable and a wake-up time when it will become available again. You can also set educational goals with time limits for apps, books, audible audiobooks and videos. And there's also a learn first toggle letting you block entertainment until educational goals are met. You can also set a total screen time and limit time by activity type. Now it's also important to ensure that children have suitable appropriate access to the web. You can enable the web browser but you can also disable it. If you enable it you can limit web content where you can add websites and web videos using the plus button and these will be approved websites and you can enable pre-approved web content which is Amazon's own curated content if you don't trust Amazon to give suitably curated content then you can choose your own you can also choose whether to enable cookies for younger children it's probably safer to ensure that the web browser is set to off as an adult managing a fire tablet for a child you can review your child's online activity you can do this via the settings parental control screen and enable monitor this profile in the activity center. Once you've done that, head to parents.amazon.com and you'll see the report in easy to read graphics. It shows you apps and videos that were the last opened. You can see their activity over the previous seven days and it's a generally useful tool. Now, if you are a grown up using an Amazon Fire tablet, then uh, it's possible that you're not using it to its full capability. There's a bunch of tips and tricks that we've looked at at makeuseof.com that you could be taking advantage of to basically get the most out of your tablet. Difficult to know where to start with this, so I'm going to go for this. You can download movies to the tablet rather than stream them over your home network. It's particularly useful if you have additional storage installed and you can either download movies at home through um, Amazon's uh, Prime service or you can copy them from your computer. Now that's what we're going to look at here. So you just copy your favorite movies or TV shows to your computer from your computer to your tablet. So um, you connect the Amazon Fire tablet to your computer via USB then you browse through the computer's file manager to the micro SD card storage. Then you copy the video file from your PC to the micro SD card. Once you've detached the tablet safely from your computer, go to the home screen, find Amazon Photos, then go to Device Photos and Videos, and in the list of videos, you will find the movie that you copied to your tablet. There's a few other things you can do as well. You can name your Amazon Fire tablet. This is particularly useful if you have a range of Amazon devices. It helps you identify it on the Amazon website. So you open settings, go to device options and tap change your device name. By default, this has probably got something like, um, in my case, um, Christian's Fifth Fire. Now, when you've got five or six of them, you're using Kindle apps on other devices and you have um, an Alexa device, uh, Amazon Echo Dot, and your children have got their own tablets also running Kindle. It gets a bit confusing. So if you can change the device name to specify which device it is, who owns it, who's using it, which model it is, that can help you to narrow it down. Um, I'll be honest, I've had so many, Amazon, um, so many Android devices over the years, nearly all of them have had the Kindle app installed. Some other devices from other, um, running other software, I've also had the Kindle app installed. These all count. And now my personal Amazon account has a list of about 25 different devices. It's not useful. I, 
generally speaking, apart from the few that I've named, I don't know what all the others are, which specific devices they refer to. So it's important to name your Amazon Fire tablet. Now we've um, mentioned already that the default storage on an Amazon Fire tablet might be quite modest. If this sounds like your device, then it's likely that you're going to hit a critically low storage error at some point. This is frustrating, especially if it's only a few days or weeks old. What can you do about that? Well, the most obvious thing to do is get a micro SD card. These are ridiculously affordable at the moment. For example, you can get a SanDisk 128 gigabyte micro SD card for the Fire tablet. It's just $14. That's immense amount of storage for quite a low price. So check Amazon when you're buying a Fire tablet or just go to Amazon and take a look at which uh, micro SD storage cards are available. They are incredibly affordable these days. To manage your Amazon Fire tablet storage effectively, you need to say, work through some steps. You need to check the storage and what's left. You need to delete unwanted apps and games. You need to delete the apps and games cache Use the OneTap archive. You need to move what data you can to the cloud. You may need to manage data from your PC and use a space cleaning app to help get rid of some of the stuff that you're not going to be using. You should also wipe your Amazon Fire tablet if things get desperate. And as we've already seen, use a micro SD card. Now, in some ways, micro SD is the last resort, but you know, maybe it's more appropriate to use it as your first resort. I'm going to show you how to check the storage on your Amazon Fire tablet. The rest of the things I've just talked about you can find in the show notes. Checking your Amazon Fire storage is really important and you can do it by opening the settings and then tapping check storage. This can take a while to load if the tablet's onboard storage is particularly full. You'll find that apps and games take up a good chunk of the built-in storage. And it's also come to find a couple of gigabytes of storage swallowed up by the non-description of miscellaneous. But by tapping this, you'll discover the others label, which is far bigger than everything else in miscellaneous. And sadly, you can't clear this. It's frustrating. It really is. And it is a shame it isn't made more usable because it, you can run out the storage, particularly on the 8 and 16 gigabyte models. You can run out the storage incredibly quickly. As I mentioned, the rest of these tips and tricks you'll find in the show notes. But I want to move on to a particularly troublesome issue that's prone to Amazon Fire tablets now. Cracked screens. It's very unusual to have an Amazon Fire tablet, or indeed any type of tablet, without the risk of a broken display. We're talking about cracks and smashes here rather than an internal functional error uh, long running listeners to the really useful podcast will no doubt recall my issues with a samsung tablet which took around two months to get repaired due to various issues with samsung we're not talking about that though we're talking about cracks and smashes particularly if you're using the amazon fire tablet for a child there is an enhanced risk of cracks and you can use a screen protector made from tempered glass to mitigate this but Trust me, it happens anyway. So what happens if your Amazon Fire tablet does get cracked? Well, we've got a guide for this, believe it or not. And um, it, it has a general look at repairing tablet screens, but it uses as its uh, source device an Amazon Fire HD 10. If there's a crack, you have two options. You can return it to Amazon and they will re replace it for you or you can do the job yourself. Now, if you're going to replace it while it's in warranty, you're fine. It's going to be free and it's no questions asked other than, is it cracked? Yes. Okay, we'll send you a new one. The repair option is a little bit more involved. It requires certain tools. These typically come with the replacement screen style. So what you need to do is Google the name or model of your tablet followed by the words replacement screen. And there are numerous specialist sellers who stock replacement parts for tablets. You could also look on eBay. Alternatively, if you have a phone and tablet repair shop near you, you could just simply take it in there. That is the easy option. For a DIY approach, and I'm a big fan of DIY and repairing things, getting the gear off eBay or Amazon 
is probably the best option. Replacement tablet screens will come with a suction cup and a plectrum for kind of getting in the edges and opening the tablet up. There's also standard screwdriver and torque screwdrivers and some plastic levers that are a bit similar to the type of levers that you would use to replace a tire on a bike, but just slightly smaller and more designed for tablets. The screen itself will feature a small cable. Basically, what you need to do is melt the glue using a hairdryer or similar. Then you break open the tablet using the plectrum and levers. You then carefully disconnect the damaged screen, in, replace it with the new screen, plug it in. You may need to use double-sided sticky tape, the very narrow type, to replace the glue. You then replace the back of the tablet, restart it, and hopefully everything works right. Now this is a very simplified approach. I've done a few of these myself, although the article I'll make use of is by Anthony Entigna. And what I found with replacing displays is if you're using a unsuitable display or a damaged, in some way, um, substandard or damaged display, it generates a lot of heat, which will cause the tablet to overheat. So as with any kind of online purchase, check the reviews before you commit to buying. It's worth pointing out that replacement screens, particularly for older devices, are ridiculously cheap. Now, it might be that the new screen costs pretty much the same or 50% of the price of the tablet that you're trying to repair, in which case you may just prefer to buy a new tablet. But if you want to gain some skills and spend some time, just, you know, a bit of mindfulness and repair time, it's, it's, it can be quite therapeutic, then use this approach and do check our guide for full details on replacing a tablet display. So we've um, kind of skirted around the differences between Amazon Fire and standard Android tablets so far through this podcast. And, you know, they are underneath. They're basically the same. Fire OS is based on Android. So you can be certain that Android apps and games are going to run on a Fire tablet. But how do you get hold of them? Well, you know, there's the Amazon App Store, which hosts a great collection of games and apps, but that's not always the case. There's five good reasons to install Google Play on an Amazon Fire tablet. Number one, the game you want isn't on the Amazon App Store. Number two, you have some Google credit and want to spend it, but you can't spend it on your Fire tablet. Number three, you already have an Android device and want to access your library of apps and games on your Fire tablet. That's, that's a great reason. And similarly, you can share Google Play library games with your children if they have a Fire tablet. And finally, with Play installed, you can then install Google Play movies and TV and enjoy your library of purchased films. So how do you install Google Play on an Amazon Fire tablet? Okay, well, there's a way to do it, and it's pretty much straightforward. It only works with Fire OS 5 and later, and it requires you to remove your micro SD card until Google Play is installed in order to avoid conflicts. Furthermore, apps installed on Play may not work with Amazon FreeTime. And similarly, your Fire tablet cannot be managed with Google Family Link from a standard Android device. Also, some apps are unavailable on Google Play using an Amazon Fire. But you should be able to find these on the Amazon App Store anyway. Check the show notes for the full instructions on how to install Google Play on your Amazon tablet. And while you're there, you may be interested to know that you don't have to put up with the default Amazon Fire OS user interface, that kind of um, shop front that is designed to siphon money out of your pocket for movies, games, audiobooks, books. The Fire OS might look like a nice user interface, but you can replace it with stock Android using a tool called Fire toolbox and there are other things that you can do to make fire os look like stock android you can abandon the silk browser and install google chrome you can replace fire os with an android style launcher using fire toolbox you can also tidy the amazon fire launcher 
and there's other Amazon features that you can disable. And guess what? We've got an article in the show note that you can check and work through to revise the look of your Fire OS tablet and make it look more like a standard Android tablet. Well, I guess that brings us to the end of this week's really useful podcast where we've looked quite in depth at the Amazon Fire tablet, which version you should choose, which is best for you, whether or not you should use it for children, whether they're going to get the benefit from it that you think they will, and various tweaks and tricks and tips to help you get the most from this piece of tech. The really useful podcast is intended to help you make the best use out of the technology at your fingertips. And uh, so if you have any ideas for what we can talk about next time, let us know. And also share this with your friends and family, particularly if they have an Amazon Fire tablet that they're not making the best use of. We'll be back next time for another really useful podcast. Until then, it's goodbye from me.